Hello, everybody, fans of the world of paleoanthropology and general enthusiasts of history and human origins. It's your favorite day of the week, not only because it's Friday, but because it's Paleo Fridays. Today, we're going to be talking about an amazing topic, one of my favorite in the entire world of paleoanthropology. And for those who have been following me for a few years, you know that's Rising Star and Homo Naledi. So why don't we jump straight in with this week's news. There's, it's pretty big news, I'd say, at least some stuff to look forward to. And then we're going to talk a little bit about who Homo Naledi is, the entire situation, and what's going on. Why don't we start with some background? So about a decade ago, in 2013, these two... Spelunkers, which are cave explorers, named Rick Hunter and Steve Tucker. And they were going through the cave, just having a jolly good time. And when they stumbled upon something that looked kind of interesting under their feet, they were clearly bones, but not being paleontologists or archaeologists, they really didn't know what they were, but they knew they were probably important. So they took pictures of them, they brought them back up, and through a mutual correspondent with Professor Lee Berger, Lee saw these photos and pretty much decided on the spot an excavation needs to happen. And after an interesting post on Facebook that you can look up, it's all over the internet, where Professor Lee Berger was searching for very petite women because to enter this cave, in Rising Star Cave, it is one of the tightest squeezes. Some of these squeezes in this cave system are the tightest on Earth. And to explore this cave, you really need to be adept. You need to have archaeological experience. You need to have caving experience. You need to have all these different types of experience and be really at the top of your game. So he put this call out and he got a team and he put them together and they went down. They went into the cave. They retrieved these fossils and they discovered what can only be equivalently called a diamond mine. And in my mind, a diamond does not equate to the rarity of a human fossil. As I just said, there are mines of diamonds. And so far, this is the only mine of human fossils we have discovered, but it is rich. So what did we find? We found Homo naledi. This is a composite skull, meaning it was put together by the skull fragments that were discovered at the bottom of an area called the chute which is at the bottom of a slide after a free fall of a few meters into a cavern called the Dinaletti Chamber. And along with this composite skull, we found hands, feet, body parts. Every part of the body is represented in this fossil find. And through the ages, from infants to geriatrics, it's, it's all there. And we don't know how they got there besides the fact that nothing washed them in. There's no sign of water erosion. The cave did not collapse, showing a different opening. There's no other openings into the cave besides these extremely tight squeezes. There's no sign of any other hominin activity until modern humans arrived recently. So how did they get there? Well, the running hypothesis is, of course that it is a burial site. And we'll get to this later, but let's resume talking about who Homo naledi is. So why don't we get a look at a few different aspects. So this is a Homo naledi foot. As you can see, it's quite small. This is of an adult, I am told, and I'm pretty sure on that. As you can see by the size of my hand, not large at all. I believe they stood three, four to six feet, four to six feet, my goodness, three feet tall three to four feet tall, and they were very adept at climbing in the trees, as we can see by their hand with their very curved fingers, but look how closely resembled to a modern human's hand that is. If you've seen one in an x-ray or one in real life, you'd know that that looks very similar to what my hand under the skin would look like. And again, same with the foot and each aspect of the foot. Now, When we're looking at a new hominin find, there's going to be a lot of people trying to fit in where this new hominin belongs instead of designating a new space because it's just easier, first of all. 
and it makes more sense for others. But honestly, there are things about Homo Naledi that have just made it so distinctly impactful that it deserved its own species. And I think almost everyone agreed with that, besides a few people. So this all happened in 2013. Fast forward a few years to, I believe, 2015, 2016, and there's another news conference coming out of South Africa from the Rising Star Cave System, presented once again by Dr. Lee Berger, the head of the expedition. And they had discovered, well, previously, the chamber that the chute that I was discussing, where the fossils were found, was called the Dinaletti Chamber. Now, further exploration discovered a few more chambers, a few more entrances to deeper caves. And in one of these deeper chambers called the Lissetti Chamber, they found a partial skeleton of what they believe is to be an adult male. Now, here is his skull. His name is Neo. And you can see it is quite different looking than the composite skull that I was showing you before. And I'll show those side by side in a moment. But please do remember that these are Paleo Fridays and not the skull comparison videos that I will be starting soon. But there's many features on the skull that you can see that are clearly hominin, let alone pretty closely related to us. Um, you do, however, have the short sloping forehead, pretty large brow ridges. The prognathism is definitely there with how far out the snout goes. But when you look at other features, such as the feet, the hands, the teeth even, things start to look much more modern. Homo naledi is a mosaic of features that are primitive and modern, and is one of the best examples of the braided bush idea of how hominin evolution occurred. Now, Homo naledi was around well, at the site 230 to 300,000 years ago, which puts them contemporaneous with modern humans, which means did we talk to each other? Did we interact? Did we mate even? There is a ghost species in our DNA that we have not identified. Could it be Homo naledi? Only future identification will tell. Now, going back to the possibility of this being a burial ground, isn't that a literal ridiculous to think ever to say? I mean, isn't ritualized burial, funeral rites, only something for modern humans? For a long time, we thought that. We thought for a very long time that funeral rites, which are different from burial rites, was something unique to modern humans. But over the last few decades, we've discovered that that is false that Neanderthals participated in not only burials, but ritualized burials. And we have examples of this in Iraq and throughout Europe. And we have some really good examples that they did this ritualistically. And of course, they are also dating contemporarily with Homo sapiens and Homo naledi. Now, the fact that there is no other entrances into this cave, no other way to get in, no other animals found, no water found, Nothing in this cave shows anything but the fact that something came in dragging these animals and then either died in there or left. We don't know which yet, but we will find out as I get to the news that is happening this week. But before that, I want to show you one more skull. This skull is very special. This skull goes very hard into adding to the burial ground aspect deeper in the cave as the cave just keeps going we found a, another chamber called the chaos chamber and in this chamber on a cleft a small shelf just like this was sitting a skull now as you can see this is the skull of a child this skull is been named Letty. And as you can see, we can actually even see the adult teeth that have not yet descended from the deciduous teeth. So this individual was about four to six years old, we believe. And it is, un it is remarkable how similar this skull looks to the Tong child and other Australopithecine that are around the same age. It seems that many hominins appear very similar early on in their life and grow and differentiate as they got older, which is something we'll have to do more research on as we continue. 
So this was an amazing find. How did this baby, this individual, not baby, but adolescent, how did this child get on the shelf? In the minds of many, it could only have been placed there. And I talked to the archaeologist who helped excavate this skull, Becker Prashoto, who was on the show, of course. You can watch our episode. She describes how underneath the skull, there could be more remains that have just kind of dribbled down the side of the shelf. But because it's so hard, because they're coming in vertically from the top to get in, well, until new tools are invented or new techniques, it's going to be very hard to get in and understand what's going on. So for now, Letty is going to be remaining a huge mystery. The child from the right, from the child from the darkness of rising star, as they are named. Of course, we do not know if it is a he or a she or somewhere in between, but that is one of the most significant finds they have found so far. It is the first. Homo Naledi adolescent skull, and here we have it. So what's going on this week? Well, I have found out, and it wasn't a secret, but Dr. Augustine Fuentes, great friend of the show who has appeared multiple times and will be coming on in the future in the later fall to talk about this um, in a later symposium, is actually in South Africa right now at Rising Star with Dr. Berger and has been in the caves and has been examining things, collecting data, and doing what he does. And what he does as a biological anthropologist and a behavioral anthropologist is he takes a look at what's going on inside the heads of these hominins and tries to figure out what happened and why as well as how biologically. So there must be something interesting in the uh, Dinaletti chamber where they were that they had to call in someone such as Dr. Fuentes to take a look at it, something very interesting. And this collaboration between some of my favorite paleoanthropologists, Dr. Lee Berger, Dr. Hawks, and Dr. Fuentes is going to be truly, I think, something amazing. And maybe we can get all three of them on the show, we'll have to see. But they're all together right now. They're meeting. They are doing something with Homo Naledi. And we can only imagine what that is. And it's going to be truly exciting when that information comes out. We can only wait and speculate. I'm only being given tidbits of information on the side. Nothing too juicy to share with everyone. But it's going to be big, I think. I think it's going to change the way we view Homo Naledi, early hominins, and how we got here, uh, as most discoveries do. Now, I think that about wraps it up for this week's episode of Paleo Fridays. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, please like and subscribe. It really does me a huge favor when you do. And as you should all know, my biggest objective is really just spreading education. And the best way I can do that is through you. And if you share my videos, you share my written content, you share anything you like, it helps not only me, it helps the community, it helps us all learn about our shared human origins, and helps us come together as a species. So please spread the word. I am here to talk. Leave any questions you have in the comments. I'm happy to answer them. I will go through all of them. It's been a great week. I hope you all have a great weekend. Remember, there's always more to learn. And with that, I say goodbye.